up next on the Believer's Walk of Faith. If your child is saved, they've got the same faith you do. And the faith you have is the faith Jesus had. And the faith Jesus had is the faith God has. That's the same faith that created the universe. He has given you that kind of faith. Say, according to your faith, be it unto you. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives and sons of the prophets to Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. You know my servant, that servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor has come to take him to my two sons to be bondmen. All right, let's look at the next verse. So she cried. Now that doesn't mean she boo-hooed. That cry is a cry of faith. He's making a demand on this prophet's anointing. He's placing a demand, and faith places the demand on God's promises. And that's why when the woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch his what? Clothes, I shall be whole. Then notice what she did. She touched it. And the Bible says virtue flowed out of him. And then he turned around and said, who touched me? And the person who was with him said, master, you see all these people pushing on you. He said, no, 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 no. Somebody touched me. Now notice, nobody got the virtue except that one woman. Say amen. amen. Now, see, it didn't mean that the promise wasn't available for everybody, but it's only released by faith. That's Romans chapter four and verse 16. So I'm saying this faith thing has a lot to do with how far we're going. And somehow we get saved by faith and stop with faith. That's not the idea. The idea is you want to stay in faith and finish in faith. And that finishing in faith, you want all that God says that you're supposed to have. The best of God is not getting sick and being healed. That is not the best. The best of God is that every virus, disease, and germ that touches your body dies instantly. That's the best of God. And you, can, you and I can walk in that. Okay, second game. All right. And Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what's in your house. And she said, thine handmaid is not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Now what that oil was is the thought, thought it's burial oil, which was worth many years wages to get that oil. Very, very um, valuable to her. Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Don't borrow a few. See, we're dealing with God now. We got to do this bountiful thinking. We got to get ourselves out of this shortage mentality. All right? Don't borrow a few. And when you come in, shut the door upon you and your sons, and you shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons. Now, notice what she didn't say. Y'all get out of here. Go play. Mama got some business to take care of. No, they were going to participate in the miracle because God wants you to pass faith on as a legacy. When you're out of here, he wants your kids to take up where you left off. Glory to God. And so what happened? So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought her the vessels to her and she did what? She poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, what? Bring me yet a vessel. Notice the sons are participating in this move of faith. Is this the right bunch I'm talking to? <laughs> Folks, we got to look at it differently. If your child is saved, They've got the same faith you do. And the faith you have is the faith Jesus has. And the faith Jesus has is the faith God has. That's the same faith that created the universe. He has given you that kind of faith. Say amen. 
That is faith that can raise the dead, can move the mountain, so forth and so on. Notice things are already done, but your faith has to be there to convert it from the unseen to the seen realm. Lord, have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. Next verse. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said to her, there's not a vessel more. And what happened to the oil? Notice the provision stopped when the demand stopped. See, don't try to make it easy on God. Make it hard on him. Don't try to make it within your ability to do it. Anything that doesn't measure up to God's promise to you, then you are undone. You got to say, hey, wait a minute. I still have some more land to take and make up your mind that you're going to take that land. Say amen to that. Now, I, I'm, I'm doing something with this. I'm making a point with this because this point really needs to be made with God's people because what has happened many times is we've, we've transferred the world of thinking into the kingdom. And, and we, 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 got, we got brought into the kingdom but our minds are still not transformed. And we're still thinking like we were in the world. And you gotta stop thinking like that. Because in the the kingdom, God is no respecter of persons. See, what he'll do for me, he'll do for you. And what he'll do for us, he'll do for somebody in Africa. What he'll do, come on now, it doesn't make any difference. So here's, here's this son. This man said, there's a lad here, I'm still with that. And he says here, according to your faith, be it unto you. Let's go back to 1 Samuel, please. In 1 Samuel, in chapter 17. Over in 1 Samuel, chapter 17, here's David. Now, David's coming to the front line. This is verse 32. I'll just start right there. Now, notice what happened. The giants are before them. And these giants are busy tormenting them. I mean, that's what Satan likes to do. He likes to bring fear in your life. Say fear not. I don't care how bad it looks, no more fear. I said no more fear. It's designed to contaminate your faith and make it so it won't work. So David said to Saul, Saul is the king, let no man's heart fail because of him. A spirit that is wounded or damaged, it's difficult to create the force of faith to come out of it, to do what needs to be done. Are you following what I'm saying? And there's a spirit called a Jebusite. A Jebusite spirit is a spirit, I put it down here, that it, it literally means to beat down. You ever heard somebody say, he got a beat down? It's an enforcer of the caste concept, C-A-S-T-E, where you have this group in this level and you never move out this group at that next level and they never can change levels. This group at that level, India has a caste system, but those are demons enforcing that. So those same demons come to America to enforce racism. And that's why a lot of times a certain people of a certain color can't get out of a certain situation because they're trying to get out without the power of God coming against the forces that are unseen designed to keep them in there. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. But if you can get faith in your life, That's what the devil doesn't want because faith can fix anything. Faith, come on now. 
When they were going from one side over to the other, here comes a storm designed to kill them, designed to sink their boat. Why? Because they're going from faith to what? Faith. And now they're going over. Here comes a storm. It didn't come up because of God's will. It came up because Satan was in control of system that are designed to sink your boat if you don't have faith. I don't care how much money you got, you can't whip Satan. I don't care how much uh, prestige you got, how much education you got, Satan can fool you in a New York minute. I'm telling you, the only thing that can beat Satan is Jesus. And Jesus is in you. Come on, the Holy Ghost is your teacher. He's gonna be the one that can tell you what to do and then you release the faith and God will take care of your situation. So I'm telling you right now, it wasn't, it wasn't Abraham Lincoln that got them off the cotton field. It was their faith. I'm telling you, somebody was in prayer. Somebody, Hassan Darabahaya. Somebody, come on now. And God had Abe to sign the paper. But I'm telling you, it wasn't the man that got you out of slavery. It was the... You better hear what I'm talking about. You're going to have to start in faith, stay in faith, and finish in faith. Now, where is your finish? Your finish is at the top of your game. God has a room for you at the top. And the higher you go, the more influence you're going to have. See, when you get to upper levels, you can drop your foot in the water and water will ripple all out over the place. God wants it so that if you drop your foot in New York, it'll ripple all the way to Pennsylvania. God wants to say amen to that. I don't know what your area of expertise is, whether you're an architect, whether you're a bricklayer, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a school teacher. I'm here to tell you, God wants you to take your mountain. Whatever mountain you have, God wants you to take it. And faith works by love. You're going to have to love your way to the top. When they talk about you, you're going to have to embrace them. When they come up, falsely accuse you, you're going to have to say, God, I'm not guilty. And let God get you out of it. I'm telling you what's going to happen. We are not done with what God wants us to do. We are about to get into the best life we've ever had in this earth. We didn't come to take sides. We came to take over. Sit down. Oh, have mercy. Look, <laughs> look at verse 33. Look at verse 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go up against this Philistine to fight him, for thou art but a who? You. And he, a man of war from his what? You. And David said to Saul, Thy servant, kept my father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and I took the lion and, and took the lion out of my flock and next thing you know I went after him I smote him I delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me I caught him by his beard I smote him and slew him I'm here to tell you right now all that was a 16 year old boy I'm saying that notice what he's doing now. He, Saul tried to disqualify him. You go back home, keep cheap. You can't do nothing here. Honey, let me tell you, when that boy tells you that I want a new bike, he tells you that, you say you got a picture of it. He goes in and gets a picture of it. He said, you said, uh, you don't say uh, money don't grow on trees. You say this, say, now, is this the best one you got? He said, yeah, dad, that's $400 bike. Okay, fine. All right, you know what to do, son, don't you? Yes, sir. He goes right in his toy box. He get that Nintendo game that you just bought. You stood in line for two hours to get that game for him. He gets that, goes to his friend that's needy. He gives it to him. And you better start cleaning out that garage because that bicycle is on the way. He's but a youth. 
but he got the same faith. And what has happened is we've looked at it carnally. We've looked at it like people were not saved. Get out of here, kids. Get out of here. Come on in here and help me believe the tuition. The same faith. Say same faith. He said, get your boys and tell them to bring you something. Tell them to bring it in here. Go out and get to the, why? Let them participate in it. Here's David. So according to your what? Faith. Be it unto you. So what am I saying now? I'm saying the enemy comes in to try to break our spirit. Now how do you keep your spirit built up? Look at Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. I got to keep my spirit built up. My son, attend to my word. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the where? Mist of thine heart you realize you're not supposed to say anything that God didn't say? You are representing the kingdom. And representative of the kingdom is an ambassador and you don't say anything your country didn't say. Say, I'm on assignment. And God is holding you accountable for the words you speak. Say what God says. Say amen to that. So, look what he says. For they are life to those that find them. And health and what? To all their flesh. One translation says, they are medicine. Now, when you operate in faith, understand. Once you confess something, give God time to, 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 to make it happen. All right, let's go over to that. Let's go over to Mark chapter 11. Verse 12, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. He saw a fig tree far off having leaves. He came to it, happy, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Now, I call this religion. Religion is a form of godliness, but it has no power. Ain't no power. You'll see religion. Religion talks loud, jumps up, run around the church and everything and go and go back home and nothing's changed. Now I'm not talking about people that can get excited about Jesus. My point to you is don't let it be a form of God. Don't be trying to do something in front of people so they'll thank you so holy and you still broke, marriage still in trouble, kids still running crazy. Sometimes practice the vocabulary of silence. Look what it says here in verse 14. And Jesus answered and said to it, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And who heard it? Disciples. They didn't overhear it. They heard it. Notice what he's doing. He's teaching. Why? Because he's got to go. My job is not to have you to always depend on me. It's not always to have you have you, somebody else do your praying for you. Now, my job is to have you to have a relationship with God. You and him. So he goes down to Jerusalem, does some business down there, turn over some cash registers. Look at verse 19. And when the evening was come, they went out of the city. Now they went out of the city and went past, back past that tree, but nothing happened. Who is that? Dr. Frederick Casey Price said he had gotten hold of the word that God got, has in the Bible on prosperity. And he just began to grab a hold of that. And people had him teaching those principles going from Northern California all the way down to El Secondo, whatever it is, all he done, he was teaching it all up and down the coast of California. He said, but what happened is he was believing God for a new Lincoln car. And you know, that was something in those days, that, that, that big Lincoln. And, um, and at the moment he was driving a car 
that had been wrecked in the front, in the back, and on both sides by his daughters. And he said he'd pull up at the church and his wife didn't quite have the revelation yet. So he'd pull up at the church, go in there and preach his powerful message on prosperity. And he said, she tried to rush him out to get in the car to get away before anybody saw what they were driving. No, no. Listen, you can be saying it and not yet have it manifest, but hold fast to confession of your faith without wavering. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. See, if you're confessing something, they don't see it in your life. Uh Uh-huh, see there? Well, you just hang on. Because if they don't change it, God's going to be true and every man's going to be alive. All right, so let's look at the next verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance and said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is what? with it away. And Jesus said to them, what? Have faith in God. In other words, have the God kind of what? Faith. Or as I teach our congregation, have God's faith. It's not your faith. Take his righteousness, not your righteousness. Take his love, not your love. Take his name, not your name. Take his life, not your life. Take his faith, not your faith. And you start using his faith, it'll move anything. So what does faith first deal with? Faith deals with the invisible. Faith deals with the invisible. Everything God has for you is already done is already there. How far out is it? It's a membrane away. A membrane away. It's like when you step out of this body and your body ceases to exist, when you get to be 120 years old or Jesus comes first, your body ceases to exist. You you step out of this body, you step into the presence of Jesus. Go into God. And what am I telling you? Faith can fix anything. How long are you slack to go in to possess your inheritance? Well, your days of slackness are over. So here's David. He's going out to fight the battle with all his men. He comes back to his camp. The enemy has invaded his camp, run off with everything, including the provision and the people. Now you are sent to get back both. Both the people, come on, and the property. Everything Satan stole comes back to you. The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians 3, 21, all things are yours. Now when he says all things, he means all things. From the surface to the core of this earth, it belongs to you. Somebody said, I thought it belonged to Jesus. It does. And you are a joint heir with him. Well, I trust that you were blessed by that powerful message. Now,
quên khi cơn mơ đêm này về Em nơi quên lời thề và ta như đông chìm sâu Không gần mới em anh nhận màu yeah. Ooh, Em chỉ cần mơ đâu em bay Chỉ còn là những cơn mơ vô ra Cho bên mơ em không mơ ai nhẹ yeah. Anh một đêm mơ Chỉ cần bên em không được cần nhớ Và chỉ còn không còn nhớ Còn người ta bên nhau như là tớ I'm my car. 